Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be reviewing Doctor Who The War Machines. This is good. This is, much like a lot of the other Doctor Who reviews I've done, this is what I've seen before. But it's still damn good. Um, if the basic premise the Doctor and Dodo arrive in modern day London. Doctor steps out, it's like, damn things. A little bit off, I don't know why. They. He feels weird about a tower, which. No, they say, he says, I haven't fed this way since the Daleks. <clears throat> I haven't fed this way since the Daleks. Which is a really good touch. Given the Daleks is what. Doctor Who, this, the Daleks' impact on Doctor Who, given that he's out here saying, you know, just comparing the two, just mentioning the two in the same breath, it automatically, in the story, gives, like, oh, the, oh, this is a serious threat, the Doctor doesn't feel right, the Doctor doesn't feel, he feels a little overwhelmed, just stepping at the TARDIS, like, it really it sets the story up really well, <clears throat> and... Yeah, so, Doctor and Dodo get the TARDIS, the Doctor doesn't feel well, senses something's wrong, especially a big tower, which I think is the, the London BT tower? I don't know. They go up, and it turns out there's an AI called Voltan. That's... It seems to be like the perfect, it's a supercomputer, it seems to be all perfect in CPUs. Cal you can ask it anything and it will calculate within seconds. The doctor goes over to it, asks it what the TARDIS stands for, just to test it. And it knows! And then they're like, oh, okay, that's weird. It shouldn't know that. It does, but it shouldn't. So they go downstairs, stuff happens, Voltan is evil. Oh, Volt is. It's very much like a, like a Skynet thing, of term of. Voltan, it knows it doesn't require humans. So, ironically enough, it hypnotizes humans in order to start taking over the world using the, well, the war machines. And, yeah, it's just, it's just <laughs> good. Uh, I have, if this one seems a little less rambling, it's because for once I actually have, <laughs> I actually have notes. <laughs> um, I love his costume in this. Like, usually it's just the grey trousers, the shoes, the, the, the sort of yellowish shirt and then the jacket. But in this one he has a cape, which I don't think we see him wear often. I don't think we only, I think we... From my knowledge, he only ever wears the cape in yeah, the Unearthly Child, and I think a little bit in the Time Meddler, but I'm not sure. I forget how good Hartnell is. He's he's a lot, he's a doctor a lot of people write off because he's not your typical. Well, I mean he is, especially when people talk about. The Doctor. They usually, when people talk about Hartnell's Doctor, they usually talk about twice upon a time. The first couple bits, well, an earthly child, and Edge Destruction. Which, no, that's uh, f first of all, t twice upon a time is is a good story, but I don't know what Moffat did to the first Doctor, and. Unearthly Child and Edge of Destruction. Well, yes, they are two Hartnell stories, and you might think, well, you know, two stories is enough to judge his character on, surely. No. No. Because he really goes through an arc. He really does go through an arc. He's, as I always say, he starts off as Unearthly Destruction, Daleks, Marinus, he starts off as the a uh, grouchy doctor. He starts off as very spiky, very 
Yeah, and honestly, he tries to kill a caveman with a rock. Like, but as as the series goes on, he be really becomes space granddad, as I can put it. Like by the time of by the time by the time that Ian and Barbara are leaving, he's soft. He's he really you really you really tell he's starting to enjoy the universe. And I, I'm glad that's a consistency they've kept. A consistency they've kept throughout the series. As time's gone on, he's... You know. It's always been said, especially in New Who. If the Doctor doesn't have anyone to travel with, he tends to become really cynical about the universe. He needs it. I mean, I'm pretty sure... Like, Martha and Donna have pointed that out, that the Doctor needs a companion, otherwise... Yeah, he kind of goes off the rails a bit and kind of goes a bit Batman-y, which even then I don't agree that Batman should be depicted in such a movie. Way. That's a whole kind of worms for another day. Um, yeah, there's a bit where there's a there's a nippy bit in the story where the Doctor goes into the and the Doctor goes into the, well there's the, the club, the Firefire Club. I think it's the Firefire Club? I don't know. It's where they meet uh, Ben and Polly. They introduce these, those companions to the story. And when the Doctor's walking over to them, one of the bartenders goes, Hey! He looks a bit like that disc jockey. Oopsies, I think that's a Jimmy Savile. Oopsies, oopsies, oopsies. I mean, from what we had, from what we've heard, William Hartnell wasn't the best, wasn't the best person behind the scenes, but it ain't Jimmy Savile. But I think, and this might just be biased because I like his doctor, but I feel like William Hartnell's, William Hartnell's, um, like doctor is very, not just doctor, and um, William Hartnell's grouchiness behind the scenes. I think that was just because he was getting older, and you know because he was. Other, as we know, he was in a lot of pain, so he might have just shot him that way, but... Because, supposedly, he was just difficult to work with. I think... Well, everyone talks about how grueling the Doctor's schedule could be, so it might have just been that as well. Like, Yeah, like, Tom Baker and John Pertwee are I know, his two of the sweetest men in the world. Yeah, they were supposedly monsters behind Doctor Who scenes, so... Yeah, the end of... The cliffhanger, are, 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 the cliffhangers in this are really fucking good. The episode one, Doctor Who is required. The first time we ever talk, about, the first time we ever hear Voltan speak, it's so impactful. It just the, the sort of like whispery speech about it, just everything about it. Even if they do refer to him as Doctor Who, which no, I know this. I know he is Doctor Who in the movie, in the movie, the computer fishing movies. And I know, even if piss takingly, uh, Missy refers to him as I'm Doctor Who in the uh, Doctor Falls. But still, it's just something to know. Um, and then the other uh, cliffhanger I want to mention is part three, which is. So good. I again, I'm talking about how much I like Hartnell before the first Doctor before, but the the the, the cliffhanger of Episode Three really cemented it for me because it's when so Votan has got one of the big war machines. They're going out. The army's trying to stop it. The bullets are bouncing off. There's nothing they can do. This unstoppable hunk of metal is coming towards them. There's nothing they can do. They retreat. The army run away. And they're like, what do we do? The doctor doesn't... The doctor just... Looks up. And slowly stumbles forward. Just stares down. And when I was watching this episode, at that moment, I was just sitting there going, Oh, hell yeah! Hell yeah! And that's what kind of what kicked off the big Hartnell train for me. Because he's... Yeah. 
it's just a badass moment and shows the Doctor won't back down. The Doctor doesn't back down at threats. The Doctor will, you know, charge forward and fight whatever can be. It's something that, it's something that, like, uh, Matt Smith's Doctor showed a lot. It's something that John Pertwee's Doctor showed a lot. Patrick Charbon's Doctor. I should make a video. You know, I should do that, actually. I should make a video series, maybe with um, my partner, just detailing the best of each Doctor. I don't know, maybe like a uh, 10 20 minute video? 15 20 minute video? Just talking about how much each Doctor is great and their defining aspects. I think that'd be really, I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, kids in the day, kids back in the day with like the war machine and that, must have been absolutely terrified of this thing. This, a big lumbering machine whispering Doctor Who's required, the mind control, the the big machines that nothing can stop and just vaporize you. And I know this is, I know it's very Daleks light with the war machines, but yeah. Kids and kids back in the 60s must be fucking terrified. <sighs> and I don't really, I'm not, I'm not, I don't put this down as a note, but I think it's in the faceless ones. If you look in, if you, if you look around, there's all, all the Doctor Who animations, at least most of them, have little visual clues. Little <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Every, oh, well, most of the Doctor Who uh, animations have little Easter eggs, which I love. Like, again, okay, faceless ones, Delgado appears, and I think Sasha Dumont as well. In, in the faceless ones, if you look around, there's actually a, a newspaper clipping that says, War Machines Defeated, Victory Over Humanity, or something like that, I love it. Yeah, the old homeless man! So there's a bit where, just after they leave the Firefly Club, they walk out into the street and, you know, get a taxi. And, put a four in the taxi. There's this lovely old man. Very clean. Um, he's just lovely. <laughs> he's just... Yeah. I think he's be. I think they say he was, like, in the hospital recently. Maybe even in the army. He... He tries to sleep in the warehouse that they're building the war machines, and they like all group upon him, and he's like, oh, "I never learned that. I'm not going to mention that thing, sir. I'll go, I'll go give someone else then, will I? He just gives me kind of like Uncle Albert energy. <laughs> I love it. Dodo. Dodo gets nothing in this. <laughs> I feel bad for. Her. Okay, is Dodo the best companion? No. Is Dodo a bad companion? Yes. But at the same time, like... It's a, it's a shame that Jackie Lane has kind of just swore off returning to Doctor Who. I don't know if she swore off it, but... It's a shame that she doesn't want to do any more Doctor Who, because... Big Finish could really fix her character. Like, Mel's, not, Mel's not a great companion, but I've been listening to a couple of audio from Mel and I think... She's good! <laughs> She's good on audio. Dodo could be fixed. I, I mean, I, I know they do have Dodo stories, but it's not. It's not the same, is it? It's usually Peter Purvis doing Dodo. But I digress. Yeah. This is just a really good story. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the story? What do you think of it? If you've seen it, talk about it below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And have a good one. Bye bye.